So can you talk a little bit about <coughs> how you feel about doing this? Um, I feel nervous a little bit, always with the people that I love. I'm always really encouraging people to be more revolutionary about their bodies. And like last year, we had a saying where we're like, this is the year that White Star clients will make peace with their thighs. Because a lot of times, you know, my beautiful, strong, inspiring clients will stand in front of the mirror and be like, I just wish they were more like this. Mm -hmm. You know, having gained 30 pounds, it's sort of an opportunity to practice what I preach. So can you talk about what your um, style says about you? Clothes have often been, like, gotten me out of bed, even in the deepest, darkest depression of my life. Have you struggled with depression? Um, I have, yeah. Not in a long time, but I did very much as a teenager in college and in my mid-twenties. Pretty much, like, I don't know, since becoming a mom, I think. Something almost felt like it changed in my chemistry. I mean, people who know me really well know this part of me really well, but are always so shocked. They're like, you're such a happy person. And I'm, I think that's a misconception about people who have battled with depression, that they're not happy people. It's, like, strangely something that as I've aged, I've become really grateful for. When people in my life are really struggling that I love, I can like s really be there for them. Can you take off your sandals? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Body-wise, can you talk about um, something that has plagued you in your life or that you've struggled with? One thing is, is that I had a breast reduction when I was 21 or 22. So I used to have size, I think they were 30 F or H. So they were big enough that I couldn't see my toes. So I can see my toes now over this belly. So they were like this. And I inherited them from my grandmother and my mom had always said to me once they kind of came, they didn't really come till I was 17. And when they came, my mom said, you know, if you ever want to get a breast reduction, I will help you. And I knew that there was a 10% chance that I couldn't breastfeed. Even at 18, I already sort of had the, I don't know how, but I already knew it was something I wanted to do in my life. I just couldn't pull the trigger. And then I went to college. I would walk, you know, four blocks to the subway. And I think I would probably have at least 10 people comment, check her out. Look at the knockers on her. The attention was out of control. And I really started to get terrible back pain. I would take Advil, which ended up giving me stomach ulcers. But I had a hard time making that decision because, I mean, come on, it's your breasts. It's like one of the physical attributes of being a woman. I felt just so free, kind of almost immediately, like when I woke up, I got up to go to the bathroom for the first time, and I was like, oh my god felt in my body in a way that I had never, I hadn't felt in years. But I've liked, I love my scars. And I was able to nurse my baby for a year, so. Can you take off your, either the jewelry or the socks? Oh, the socks. I'm just, I'm, I'm going with the socks for the, okay. my body's like a little bit like a furnace right now. <laughs> I lost two babies last year, so I feel very lucky that this one has cooked for so Miscarriages? long, yeah. I had one, um, a pretty late miscarriage in the, at, I think I was 17 weeks. My water broke in the middle of the night and I went into labor and I gave birth to a tiny little baby that wasn't alive. That was a little boy. <laughs> I woke up in the middle of the night and I wasn't feeling right. And I didn't wake up my husband and I had like a cup of chamomile tea and I went back to bed and I said, I woke up Gary at that point, I said, I really don't feel right. He's like, are you okay? And I'd been like nauseous and so on. I said, I don't know, I don't know if I'm okay. And I like rolled over and 20 minutes later, my water broke and then I was like, I'm definitely not okay. So by that time it was about 5.45 in the morning and I called my doctor who'd been my doctor since I was 19. She said, okay, <clears throat> you know, why don't you lay down and call me if anything changes? which was such a gift because she knew what was going to happen. And instead of saying, call me when it changes, she said if. 
At that point, Gary had called our babysitter and said, you know, can you come really early? Because <laughs> I just didn't want Louie to be home. And so Louie woke up and he was so amazing. Gary told him and he was like, you know, three and a half at the time. And Gary said, you know, mama's not feeling well. She's laying on the couch. She's not gonna make your breakfast. What can I make you? And he came and he got in the couch and like snuggled underneath my arm and kissed me. He was like, I love you, mama. It's gonna be okay. And then our babysitter came and they left the house and then I started to bleed. And I um, had like the feeling like I had to go to the bathroom. And so I went to the bathroom and I passed the baby and I picked him up and he was like perfect, but so little, but perfect, you know? It was one of those moments where you're like, wow, <laughs> like this is why people go so crazy about all this. <laughs> but so, and I wrapped him in a blanket and then I called my doctor and she said, okay, I'm, she lives in New Jersey and she said, I'm gonna meet you at the hospital. And we took a taxi or a car service to the hospital. And when we got there, it was then things got rather dramatic. I um, sat down and I had the feeling like I had to go to the bathroom. I got up and I mean, I lost, like you know the hospital plastic chairs, how there's like that little divot in them? It like was filled with blood, there was blood everywhere. And Gary lost all the color in him. He's like, my wife. Then my doctor got there and there was a waiting room for the OR, you know, to have a DNC. And she said, we could wait for the OR or I could give you some morphine and we could just do this here right now. And I said, let's just do this here right now. And that experience, like, I felt so lucky for. Like I was with my doctor that I trusted in a really clean place and I realized in that moment that like that's all you need. You didn't even need electricity and there are women all over the world that have miscarriages that die because they don't have access to someone who can give them a clean DNC and clean them out so that they don't like bleed out. One of my best friends in the world was getting married six days later in New Orleans. And that was like, she has a pretty hectic family life and it was just so important that I be there. And that was maybe the hardest thing that I did. Cause I, had, I was taking a medicine to contract my uterus and I got on a plane and I flew to New Orleans for her wedding. And it was definitely one of the hardest things I've ever done cause I was suffering, but you know, it was like the most important thing that I, I be there. Her friends are her family. And, but all my friends just loved me so much. And it just wasn't his time, which was really helpful for me because I'm a really spiritual person. I don't want a scientific answer. <laughs> like had there been one, I think that would have been a real challenge for me. When do you feel the most vulnerable? when my son is really upset. My consoling him is not making him feel better. I really mm -hmm. will get insecure as a parent. Don't discipline the behavior, think about the cause. Like, why are they acting like that, you know? So my mind just starts moving so fast. And just that you don't maybe have in that moment when he's having such a hard time that maybe he just needs to have that hard time and I just need to be there for him. Like someone's having a dark time and you're like, time out. That's mm -hmm. like teaching you when you're in your darkest moment and you're having a hard time, I'm not gonna be here for That's you. I'm gonna leave depression. the room. Can you take off your... You have my jumpsuit? Yeah. When do you feel the most beautiful? On the beach, in the ocean, in the sand in a bikini, pregnant, not pregnant. Okay, last question. Why in your body is it a good place to be? It's a good place to be because I'm cooking this guy. I get to be the best wife that I can be and the best mother and friend. And it's my vessel, you know, through how I can experience love in this world. So it feels, Lucky. Thank you, that was amazing. How do you feel? I feel good. I feel good. I just feel like I have to pee. <laughs> but I feel good. I like that. It's healing. It's healing to talk about miscarriage. I really talk about miscarriage a lot. I tell like strangers. Like, it's so important for people to hear. 
it's just it's really fucking happens all the time.